I could go on like this forever. I have this overwhelming desire to sing something Italian. I'm serious. You know, I'm sure I was a Venetian in previous life. Well, I think I was from the South. Yes, Magnolia or Mint Julep, that was me. <laughs> well, why, Miss Lucy? I just love your julep. <laughs> hey, babe, why don't you come over here and give me a kiss? I want a kiss. You want a kiss? Oh, yeah. Ah! 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 Lucy, ah! are you all right? Ah! 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 Do you know them? No. Uh, no worries. Ah! Now we're embarrassed and they must think we're mad. Fun? Sorry to disturb you. Oh, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah, we could have drifted out there like that forever. That wasn't what I was afraid of, Matthew. <laughs> Hi, listen, I'm Lucy, and uh, this is Matthew Tyler. Well, I'm Lynn Harris, and this is my husband, Roger. Oh, I can tell you newlyweds, by the way, you say husband. <laughs> you were honeymooning in the valley as well? Always. We live here. Well, it's a lot better than the holiday farm we're staying at, isn't it, darling? The brochure was fine. Devonshire teas, trail rides on quality horses. Mm -hmm. So far, only the air has lived up to our expectations. Well, there have been compensations. <laughs> Looks like the thoroughbred's got a bit of a limp. I haven't aggravated at riding him, have I? He'll never race. Oh, no. Ah, <laughs> oh, but don't worry. He couldn't before. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to know a bit about it. Yeah, we're old friends. You're staying over at the Fishers. That's right. Yeah, Matt's the local vet. Um, Mr Fisher doesn't treat his horses very well, the poor thing. Mm. Yes, he won't spend a cent on them that he doesn't have to. Mm. Poor old Jet, and he has probably picked up a stone. I'll check him over for you. Oh, thanks, I appreciate that. Well, while you're waiting, I'll see if I can run up a reasonable Devon GT if Ivan feels like performing. <laughs> Ivan? Helps us with the cooking, if he feels like it. I see. Yeah, thanks very much. So peaceful here. <laughs> Occasionally. This keeps the wound clean and dry. Of course. It's all been an overreaction. I would like to have seen it a lot earlier. <laughs> Sorry, Marnie, I think the doctor knows where. You finished? Yes. Miss Rose, we are here to help you. I have yet to be convinced of that. Marnie, I I'm sorry. It'll be all right from now on. I've organised the necessary modifications to the house. I should have had them done before we moved in, and this wouldn't have happened. Just settle down, Jennifer. Let's not make something out of nothing. We've got this lovely man doing the renovation. Hatfield's his name. We don't know anything about him. Ah, oh, Bob's a good man. He'll see you, right? So I chose the right person, then. It's so difficult being new to a town. Hurry up with that, please. Sorry. Marnie's... Well, she's touchy about hospitals and has never been keen on meeting new people. Must make it tough on you. I get by. Perhaps if I dropped out and looked at Bob's alterations, maybe made a few suggestions from a medical point of view, things might be a bit more relaxed. That would be wonderful. What would? Nothing. These are the antibiotics. If you could make sure that your sister takes them through... My legs may not work, sister, but my hands and my brain aren't quite as useless. I assume the instructions are on the labels. They usually are. I'm sorry. Yes, of course they are. Jennifer? Oh. Thanks. See you soon. Steve thinks I'm a dragon. Perhaps I should set up a meeting between her and Marnie Rose. It's the sister I feel sorry for. <laughs> it's sad to see such a young... And attractive? Well, anyone, if it comes to that, throwing their lives away. <laughs> well, she's not the only one who'll be suffering at the moment. Crits on Cops the Musical. I think we'd better prepare a bed for Frank. <laughs> oh, dear. Poor Frank. Bob Hatfield and his gross sidekick, Cookie Lock, came in high and didn't finish until they stunk. Doesn't sound good. Well, some of the show is last minute. Hey, leave some excuses for the Sarge. Beverly, get me the Burrigan Examiner. Paper hasn't been delivered again. Why didn't you tell me you had it? You didn't ask. You won't like it. Give it to me. Look, Sarge, all it says is don't give up your day job, Sergeant Gilroy. <laughs> Any problem with cops was due to bad performances and lack of attention. The subtext was missed. Well, so is Shirley. She took off out of here before that came out. That isn't true. Her mother's sick. Well, Frank, I think you did an excellent job. Come on, let's go. Mm hmm? Oh, Steve's got a new tractor she wants to show me. You're supposed to be studying. Oh, sorry. 
What new tractor? Old bank came good with the loan. Oh, new manager treat you well? Better than the last one. Oh? Uh, nothing. Hey, look, the law's against me at the moment. Maybe in a couple of days. I can't wait that long. Hey, hang on, here's something. The evening was saved by the magnificent voice of Steve Brennan. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> oh, thanks. I better go. Don't forget a pen. What? To sign all the autographs. Oh, funny, Luke. You should have been in the show. Sarge? Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And after a terrible night, well, not terrible, <laughs> the mattress sagged, so we rolled together. Oh, well, that's just dreadful. <laughs> well, frankly, that was the high point of the trip so far. So we went to breakfast. Mm. Breakfast? It was more like an oil change in Greece. Yeah, I don't think the fishes are too good on things like cholesterol. Mm. So, listen, what was the appeal of Wanda Valley anyway? Oh, salt goes over there. Oh, Rick, Rick, get down from here. Sorry. Oh, Roger's ancestral home. His mother lived here. She died of cancer. I don't think he's ever got over it, but he's that kind of guy. Me, I get on with things. Always the optimist. But we balance each other really well. Oh, yeah, I'm the practical one in this relationship, too. Ivan! Oh, how can you do this to me? Ivan? The oh. Ivan. Yeah, he's got his own little personality, just like Max. He was a devil, but I was really sorry when he had to go. Who? Max. He was my car. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so what do you call the boat? Marco? <laughs> no, that's heaven. Oh. It is out there, isn't it? You know, I'd always hope to go to Cambridge and punt under the willows. But right now, the Tyler Dam looks just as inviting. Well, it's a lot closer. <laughs> That's done it just what I need. I'm about to start house calls. Oh, Bev, get me the garage, please. What's up? It's what's down that's the problem. Oh, Rick, it's Terence Elliott. <laughs> Two flat tyres. Yeah, I'm in tearing hurry. It's parked out front of the hospital. Would you? Thanks. Two. 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 Never in my life. Mm, I have. Once in Perth on my way to work. There was a truck in front of me and I could see that the load was loose, but, you know, it just never connected. And then down it came, bottles all over the road. Two flat front tyres. Mm -hmm. Minor rear. Oh, you probably backed into something. What do you make of that? Someone wants to kill you, Doctor. Take care. A well-wisher. Might think garbage. Yeah, exactly. That's where it's going. Hey, no, no, let me see that. Well, come on, it's just somebody's sick idea of a joke. And two flat tires? Do you think that's somebody's idea of a joke as well? <laughs> I suppose we looked like a couple of real city slickers when we turned up. Yeah. Even your Reeboks are perfectly clean. I once had close family in the country, believe it or not. Around here? My mother. That's right, chose to honeymoon here. Came back for nostalgic reasons. Shouldn't known better. Nothing's ever as good as you remember it, is it? Despite everything you're saying, Roger, I still get the impression that you and Lena are having a pretty good time. Yeah, nothing worries, Lynn. She loves anything out of the ordinary. Me too. That's why I married Lucy. Oh, well, he's only saying that because he knows I'll thump him if he doesn't. You two haven't cleaned up yet. I thought Lynn came out to warn you. She did, but we got sidetracked, and so did she. She's down having it with the boat. Oh. Lynn and Roger are lawyers. I was just telling Roger we could do with a bit of new blood around here. Oh, yes. I mean, Mr. Mathers is lovely, but he's about 90. It's hard to get lawyers in the country, though. Oh, yeah, Lucy. I mean, all of them are just after the quick city buck. I heard that about country vets. <laughs> Look, I give as you go, OK? Go and get cleaned up, and I'll go and get Lynn. OK. OK? <laughs> Come on, Doc. Come on. Here, girl. Catch up. Help me. 
Well, mm -hmm. I think you must have been very fond of you girls to leave your lovely old place like this. Perhaps it was guilt, Mr. Hatfield. Uncle Jack never came to visit us. Also, we were the last surviving relatives, so we really didn't have much choice about leaving it to us. Nice old bloke. We got a bit cantankerous sometimes. Oh, well, don't we all? Me especially. Maybe you got good reason, eh? Have I? Have I really? It's no excuse, you know. Everyone's lives are difficult. Why make things harder? I'll go along with that. I found people to be just wonderful here. We've only been to the hospital. We know Bob now. Yeah, well, I reckon you two ladies should get out and about a bit more. We meet down at the club, you know. Everyone? From the hospital as well? Yeah, usually. <laughs> we just did this musical called Cops. We read about it. <laughs> Wouldn't believe all you read. I still read the man cooking with the highlight of the night. It's fantastic when people work together in that way. I guess it's the one thing I've missed since... Well, I used to love acting when I was younger. <laughs> Well, maybe you could join up, maybe. Uh, we need new talent. When we get time, we might manage those sorts of things, but at the moment, we are rather busy. Yeah. Well, I'll get along and I'll, I'll be back tomorrow, huh? Thank you. You're doing a fine job. Thanks. See you, ladies. Bye-bye. I would really like to do something like that. I'm sure you would, Jennifer. Especially if a certain doctor was going to be in it, too. I don't think that. There's, there's no pulse. I, I can't. Okay, you do now, as I've just done. On the fifth compression, you breathe. Oh, and she's dead. Just do it. Four, five. Now, breathe. One, two, three, four, five. Again. One, two, Ambulance is on its way, three, Lucy. Four, five. Oh, God. I should never have brought her here. Three, four, five. Three, four, five. I think I've got a pulse. Four, five. Come on, Lynn. Two. Yeah, I've got a definite pulse. She's alive. Look who I found at our front door. I was doing house calls, so I thought I I'd... came to you for treatment for a minor fall, Doctor. I don't remember issuing an open invitation for you to come poking into my life. Marnie, the house has been, shall we say, adjusted to my needs, and I have Jennifer. Miss Rose, I understand that you may you feel that I... You have no I'm... idea, Doctor. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Dr. Elliot has just been friendly, Marnie. Friends are not the issue, as you well know. I don't mean to be rude, but I value my privacy. In my condition, there's little else I have any real control over, if you excuse me. Oh, I don't know what's happening. She's not usually so... so difficult. I've dealt with far more obstreperous patients in my time. But you were with her constantly. How long? Since her parents died. About 15 years. And with Manny's condition. Well, it was all up to me. <laughs> well, I, I think you should get out more, meet other people. Well, it's only got so bad recently, her need for me. It was fine before. I held a wonderful job, but... Well, uh, I think we can find ways of giving you some more time. Could you? Mm. For me? Yes, we have a respite system organised. Now, why don't you drop in... I'd love to. Uh, ...to the hospital or the clinic sometime? Oh, thank you. You've been wonderful. Oh, not at all. It's part of the job. Is it? Hmm. Ah, it's lovely work. Money's. She makes good money from it. She's lucky to have work to do from home. There's a lot of secretion in there. Do you want me to suction? Yes, and I want her in intensive care on a ventilator as soon as possible. It isn't good, is it? Keep up the bagging loose. It's far too early to tell at the moment. Uh, her heart's pumping adequately and we're keeping her lungs clear, but I'm afraid it's going to be quite a while before we can say anything for sure. I'm sorry. It was so... One minute she was there and... Well, just keep thinking positively, because she has a lot in her favour. She's young, she's healthy, there doesn't appear to be too much water on her lungs, and the fact that she was resuscitated so soon is a big bonus. I can't understand any of this. She can swim. She never called out. Why? 
Well, some things, you know. That's this place. Roger, my mother. you're still in shock. Now, why don't we go get cleaned up, eh? No, no I want to. I think that's a good idea. I'll have some test results back by then and uh, go on. We're doing everything we possibly can. Roger, it's all right. What do you think the damage is? She must have been with that oxygen for at least ten minutes. She was so bright, I can't believe it. Are you all right? Yeah, don't worry about me. Hi. Yeah, went back. It was lousy. It was on the nose, mate. No, the critic. He didn't understand, you see. Oh, it was too subtle for him. Right over the top of his head. Yeah, and up his nose. Oh, <laughs> come in to show us up, over What? The only bright spot in the evening. Oh, come on, you guys. Don't you just start to Don't take your nose. I mean, love your real hit. Thanks. But enough's enough. You know, I've been trying to test tractors all morning. And all the lunatic sales guy wanted to do was get my autograph. Well, at least you get asked. The last time somebody asked me to sign something was a debt collector. <laughs> yeah, well, I really want this tractor. It's fantastic. It can do everything. But all I can afford is a no-frills one, which is OK, but it can't Listen, be nearly as... Listen, tractor isn't everything, is it? You're young. Mm. Wish I could sing like you. <laughs> well, if you could, we'd make a million, son. But you can't, Buffett. But you can. Tell you what, if you knew the sort of money I'd to pay for acts to come to this country. Got a point there. Buy a lot of tractors for that sort of that. But you would need a manager, of course, somebody who knows the business. <laughs> and you just happen to have someone in mind, right? Well, I've booked a few here to know what it's all about. Uh, of course, there'd be uh, handling fees, but there's enough to go around. But well, do you reckon I could? Of course you could. Hey, buy pretty dresses, travel, all the things a young girl should be doing, Steve. Yeah, but I could buy my dream tractor. Yeah, and earn me, I mean, earn us. <laughs> Look, I wouldn't be able to start you on top rates. Just put yourself in my hand. We'll look after you, love. <laughs> Another offering from my mysterious little mate. Oh, what? That's what's left of my right front headlamp. Parents, no. I just about finished house calls. I was at the Hopkins. You know how June Hopkins rattled on. I was there maybe 20 minutes. I came out. There it was. Terence, I really think this has gone far enough. I think it's time you brought Frank in it. I'm beginning to think you're right. I'll drop around and see him after clinic. It's beginning to get to me, too. I'm starting to look twice at anyone who comes in. But, you know, there was something funny about that letter. Excuse me, I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, of course not. How's your sister? She's fine, thanks. But well, Chris is waiting for these. Now, straight after clinic, and I shall be very annoyed if you don't. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. Are you pleased? Of course. I'm glad you took up the offer. Marnie needed some special ink, so... Right. Well, now, uh, let's see. Shirley dropped some forms off. Shirley? Yes, my receptionist at the clinic. She's up in surface looking after a sick mother. Oh, I yes. thought... Here we go. It's a shame that your sister's become so dependent. It usually works the other way. Her paraplegics usually do their darndest to stay as independent as they can. Oh, I see. Respite care may be just the thing to make her realise she can function without you. Yes, that'd be good. Now, the hospital has some beds for respite care. I think they're all booked at the moment, but I'm sure we can fit mine in. Here I am, Doctor. The cavalry to the rescue. Sorry I'm late. Oh, yeah. It's all right, Miss Watson. I only just got here myself. Did you know that one of your headlights is broken? Yes, I'd noticed. I was in here earlier. I tried to get this sorted out for you. It didn't get very far. Now, we don't have an appointment until... Oh, right, here we are. Uh, Bill Dyer at 2.20. I don't know why I made it that time. We've still got half an hour to kill. Oh, well, that'll give me a chance to get this all organized. <laughs> oh, I had such a busy time at the tuck shop, but I do enjoy it, all those sweet little faces. Well, thanks for helping us out like this, Miss Watson. <clears throat> what with running after Jesse and everything, we seem to pile an awful lot onto you. I like to do my little part, Doctor. Good, good. But let us know if there's a problem. Yes, well, uh, someone seems to have been playing about with the computer. Oh, <laughs> I'm afraid that was me. Darn thing seems to change the rules every time I use it. At least we'll get an idea of the weapon used, if nothing else. Yeah, you have a cup of good, strong tea, and it'll make you feel much better. Thanks, Miss Watson. 
Surely somebody must have seen a car or heard something. This is a quiet town. Well, I'm holding a good time. I'm going to do a door knock after I leave here. As you say, somebody must have at least heard the shot. To point two two by the look of it. If I hadn't moved to talk to Miss Watson. Oh, anyone could do it. Oh, dear. That's what I've been asking myself all day. What? You can add two flat tyres, broken headlamp, and a letter to that. What letter? Oh, some crank warning me about... About uh, an attempt on your life, perhaps? I was coming to see you, Frank, straight after clinic, I promise. Well, I won't say better late than never. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I just didn't take it seriously. Where's the letter now? I threw it out, I think it arrived at the hospital. Well, I'll try and find it. It would have helped. Look, Doc, the sooner we pinpoint this character, the better. Now how? Go through your files. Maybe there's someone there that holds a grudge. Oh. Well, that's great, isn't it? Looking at all my patients, wondering which one of them's a potential murderer. It has to be done. Uh, Frank, and, and until we solve this, can Chris and Jesse come and stay with you? And, Miss Watson, if you'd like to go if to your place... If I go to my house, what happens to you, Doctor? Well, I'm not going to be driven out of my house by some crank. Then I'm not leaving either. All right, I'll get a watch put on the house. No, that's not... Yes, sir. Now, stay away from windows. Anything suspicious, you report to me. Stay here until I get back. I'm going to try and find the ladder. It's the only thing we have to go on. Mind if I disturb you? Well, I've got things I oh, want to just keep up working. On. I won't get in your way. Great. I actually just came to ask your advice. Well, Bob and Cookie, oh, not just Bob and Cookie, everyone, really, they've all been saying I could be a real singer. Mm-hmm. Well, I certainly would make good money and I could get that tractor I really want. Well, I can see how that would be tempting. Well, oh, Cookie said he'll organise the jobs. I mean, the gigs for me, yeah. Well, I know Cookie's always coming up with these get-rich schemes, but, well, it's not really just him, it's everyone. They've all said they'd help. Oh, Anne, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. What? Sit on my desk? Oh, no, that's nothing. It could have been you. <laughs> Me? A singer? No, really. Yeah, well, I'm selfish. Not thinking about how you might feel. Look, Steve. Firstly, I could never sing like you. And secondly, despite all of this, I wouldn't give this up for the world. You're not just saying that to make me feel better? I mean, I thought you might be a little jealous. Jealous? Mm -hmm. No, really, I love hospital life. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's music talk. You know, even the tractor salesman is interested. Not too interested, I hope. Oh, no, no. no. Good. And now, uh, what did you want my advice about? Well, should I do it? Well, there's an old show business saying, if it feels good, do it. Well, yeah, it feels good. Then do it. You know, you may be the only sister I have, but you are the greatest. Oh. <laughs> How does rib roast and fresh vegetables sound? Mmm. Found the most fantastic shop, all grown in the area. I like that. What about inviting Dr. Elliot out here? If the two of us ask, he might not be so shy. He's quite sweet, really. Such a workaholic. I took his attitude personally at first, but then I realised that was silly. He's just cautious of strangers. I suppose most country people are. I like that in a man. Jennifer, you have got to keep away from him. Oh, don't be like that, Marnie. I know it's not fair when I have boyfriends, but... It will only cause us trouble. Remember. It will be better this time, Marnie. I promise nothing will hurt you. We'll be fine. It's different here. Wandon Valley. I promise. I promise. I'm here to look after you. Aren't I? Well, things changed. I think we should leave. Because of Uncle, we have a house. Our own. It's fitted out to suit you. Let's stop and make a life here. It'll be wonderful. Jennifer. You over-worry about everything. All I want to be sure of is that this dinner turns out as beautifully as I hope. And we'll all live happily ever after. Cheer up, man. What are her levels done? We have 10 breaths a minute, 600 mils tidal volume, 5 of PEEP and 50% oxygen. 
Well, so what does that mean? It means she's stable. Yeah, but all this equipment, I mean, you're trained, you're supposed to know. I mean, it's only common sense. Roger. Look, common sense is we keep doing tests and we continue to work on her until we know something, one way or the other. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to say is um, she's alive, but she was underwater for a long time. If, when she survives, I mean, sorry, I'm not making myself clear. Um, I'm a trained mind too. I deal with facts, precedents. Compared with other cases you've done before, what are the chances? Of brain damage. It's a very real possibility. But as I said before, every case is different. Now, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I'm sorry, there's just no other answer I can give you. There must be. Look, I can't predict in a situation like this. And even if I thought I could, I wouldn't. Because science hasn't even begun to understand some parts of the human brain. So, I never give up. So, you think I've just got to let go of my intellect and wish for something close to a miracle? That's what medicine's all about? Sometimes, yes. Well, I don't know, I want to, but if I hope and things go wrong... Would it be any more painful? No, I suppose not. So, if I hang in there, she will. She'll know I'm here. She might just believe anything is possible. There's not much choice. We'll know more in a day or two. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, Cookie, give us a look at the menu, will you? Sarge isn't back yet. He's got a bit on his mind now, mate. You see, me and him, we're sort of managing Steve's career. What? Oh, it's a tough business. It gets very tricky. You've got to be able to grab every opportunity you can. Looks yeah. like so that's what Cookie's doing yeah. now, mate. We don't want any rhymes here, all right? Look, my daughter thought you were fantastic. Oh. Would you sign that? Yeah, sure. You don't mind, mate, we don't want to exhaust her. All right, all right. Cookie, oh, I've thanks, only mate. signed three. Your signature is worth money, and don't you forget it. What he says, love, you don't want thousands of signatures all over the place when you're famous. Yeah, we don't want anyone exploiting her, do we? Every performer has a business manager, and Steve here doesn't want to worry about the business. She's a talented girl. We just want the best for her. We just got to change her name. That's all. Uh, what about uh, Julie Moon? Come on, have a look at history. Rip-off agents always creaming the profits. Now, what you need to do is take control, like one night a week at the lodge. Yeah. That'd really give me my dream tractor, Luke. Oh, no, no, no. Get your own style. Kind of like some new clothes. Really tight, like Madonna. And build your body up a bit. What is wrong with my body? Sell yourself. Get an image. Hang on. She's fine as she is. She sings like a bird. She's a good kid. Torch singer. That's what'll do it. No, no, she's got to learn to dance. Then we can make it in Australia. It's all very simple, all of you. The world at my feet, and all I was doing was coming in here to meet my sister. Well, them's the breaks, kid. It's like going through an old photo album. Full of memories. This town has changed so much, it's so sad. Oh, there's good things as well. There was a time when you knew every soul in the place. There was always a hello wherever you went. Well, the lads from Barrigan were very grateful, Miss Watson. Well, they'll have a long night ahead of them. I do hope they'll be all right. I'm less worried about them than I am about you at the moment. Oh, I'm a survivor, Sergeant. I thought you'd discovered that by now. <laughs> no, it's all right, Miss Watson. I've hello, let the answer machine on. Elliot. I'll call back, Miss Sergeant, at the moment. Please leave your message and contact number yeah. after the beep. Uh, speak to me. Come on. <coughs> okay. Hello? What's this all about? Hello? Hello? That was a woman's voice. Yeah, this is a, a country girl makes good profile. You like it? Oh, sure. Well, if you reckon that's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, stand over here, thanks, Steve. What, by the fence? Yep, that's right. Okay, now, uh, just swing your hip away a bit. <laughs> okay, now, hold it. Say cheese. Sorry, mate. Oh, she looks a treat and she's doing just great. Oh, I'll have to be faxing her at the London Palladium soon. How much feed do we give the cows in the okay, top paddock? Good. When do we dip the sheep? Don't right. reckon it's a good idea, eh? Oh, up to a point. And she's going along with it now, but I warn you, she'll only do what feels right for her. I get the message.
Okay, try that. All right, just look away a little bit. Well, it's all organized. First thing, and you won't have to worry about Steve. I'll take care of her. What's all this? Exclusive rights for my service. A contract. Another one. Here we go. For three years. She's a very lucky girl. It's not everybody I take a punt on. Hey, what's going on over there? That's it. That's enough. That's enough. What are you doing? Don't worry. It's only for the Burrigan Examiner. Where's the contract? Who negotiated this? Negotiated? The fee? The money? This is publicity, you idiot. They don't pay you. Hey, keep out with your bird brain. This is the real world. No pay, no way. Ah, oh, look, forget it then. Thanks, Steve. Hey, wait a minute. That, that's my film. That's my film. I'm going to sue. Hear me, I'll sue, you parapatsy. I think he means me paparazzi. Right. Uh, you know, a you photographer. Put me down. Put me down. I don't believe this. Everybody. You leave me alone, you pig head. Hold on. One down. And I'll show this to him. Hello. I think it's a pity that we can't have some of Lynn's things in here. My mother died. I thought I would never let anything be so painful again. But now... Yes, I know. We take a terrible risk when we love someone, don't we? I think you're just going to have to tell yourself that it's going to be OK. I don't know. I've never had much faith. That's what I've got now. G'day. Hello. Just come in to see how you're feeling. I felt a lot better. I was just saying that it's a shame we don't have some of Lynn's things in here, you know, like a, a hairbrush or a nightie. What do you think she'd like, Roger? She's got a beautiful cream, silky one. Honeymoon, remember? Mm. She looked so beautiful when she wore it. You know, shy, but loving. Showing off in it. It's silly. Oh, we know. <coughs> what? What's happening? She's triggering her own respirations. It's good. Is it going to be all right? Is it? It's a good sign. Please? You're okay, boy. I heard that voice over and over in my head all night. It's a woman, but who? And what have I done? I keep thinking I should know the voice, but I don't. I'm warning you, Doctor. Time is up. Got any leads yet? What? Well, it's all over town. You can't keep something like that quiet around here. Oh, that's all we need. Well, it's pretty freaky, isn't it? Out. You know, I think it's an old patient. Probably someone... Come on, out, out. Just trying to help. I mean, everyone's pulling for you, Doc. Thanks. Everyone's pulling for you. Trick is to find out the one who isn't. Well, you found it. And Of course. Good instincts. She says it's written by a woman. I've waited 15 long years. Now, that's the bit that gets me. I wasn't here 15 years ago. Perhaps you're not the real target. But she's seen me. She's found my home. Perhaps it's some woman I've unwittingly hurt and she's tracked me down. But she says what happened to her here. Now, here must mean Wandon Valley. I don't know. Here. Here. Oh, Bev, get me the hospital, will you? Roger. It's OK. I'm here. Everything's OK. Oh, my throat hurts. They put tubes in it. You've been unconscious, Lynn. But why? What? Don't you remember? The boat? Yes. I fell in the dam. I thought you were dead. Oh. Lucy. Hello. Welcome back. The scones. <laughs> They're rock hard. Oh. I missed you. I'm with you all the time. You rest. Mm. Can't believe it. Mm. All that time. The diving reflex. It's the only explanation. It's a reflex where, in extremely cold waters, the lungs close. That, um, well, it closes down a whole system protecting them. No real facts to explain it, huh? Nope. I guess I'm forced to accept it as a reality now. Roger. Here, 
here's one more Sandra mother and child died in childbirth not too far back oh, instincts aren't working properly at the moment sorry you know, something has to come through on the handwriting but this is fascinating stuff you know it's practically a whole history of the valley it's people can't believe the birth rate then the size of staff numbers of people it used to be a thriving old town all right on the way of most country towns now, that. Yeah, lure of the city. Worked in reverse for me. I really must have a proper look through these bat records sometime. Yeah, well, the sooner we get through it all, the better. Um, yes, it would have helped if Terence had been here to give us a hand. Well, he wanted to keep his mind off things. I can understand that. Yeah, can't say I'd like to figure out who might hate me. And it mightn't even be to do with someone dying. It's impossible. Well, we've nothing to lose by keeping going. Hannah, here's a familiar name. Rose. Rose. We had a patient with that name in yesterday. Rose. Rose. Ah, oh, right, yeah. This takes me back. Motor vehicle accident out at Razorback Ridge. It was bad. The parents were killed outright. Mm -hmm. Kitty seriously injured. Now, could that have been Marnie Rose? I don't recall any names. Uh, yes, here it is. Marnie and Jennifer. There was... What? Well, there was some kind of to-do about it. Um... It says here she was later transferred to Sydney. Yeah, none of it was due to the doctor. The doc wasn't here then. It... It's got me. I can't make a connection. I wonder why she came back. I think she'd hate the place. Steve! Steve! Be there. Oh, yes, Bob. I won't be long. No, 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 listen. This patient I've lined up in Bogan is a very, very busy man. We're supposed to be taking him to a flash lunch, and we're supposed to be in your best clothes, love. Not while the animals are starving, Bob. I won't be long. Look, you'll be able to pay some bloke to do it for you, son. There's a band in Bogan that wants to back you. Sounds good. Go back while you're hot, while they still remember you. Bob, they can't forget me before I've even started. No, the other night, I mean. Oh, wow! Oh, you beautiful, beautiful thing. Is this beautiful or what? Oh, it might not be the one that Steve really wanted, but it's there. It's real. That's what counts with Steve. Look up this agent, the band. They're waiting to meet up. I have a feeling that they might be waiting a long time. What do you think, Anne? This is going to do the job, isn't it? Oh, come on, baby, let's see if you're as good as you look. Doc. I might have something. What? Well, it might be nothing, but there's an awful lot of coincidence. The Rose family. I'd never heard of them until yesterday. No, but I hadn't, so had your predecessor. And I've dug out some other information. Now, the child in this accident, which killed her parents, was 14-year-old Marnie Rose, paraplegic, 15 years ago. Exactly what it said in the tape. Uh-huh. Well, paraplegia is a pretty good reason for bitterness, I suppose. But why pick on you? That didn't gel with me either until I went back through my papers. Now, I testified at an insurance hearing at the time because there was evidence that old Dr. Clark's handling of the child at the accident site caused the paraplegia. Was there a finding against him? No, there was a lot of talk around at the time that Clark only got off because he was retiring anyway. And still, this has nothing to do with you directly. No, it's got a lot to do with hospitals and with doctors in general. Why not focus in on me as much as anyone, particularly if you're a very unbalanced young woman? I still find it somewhat hard to credit. Yes, I know. But she's intelligent. She's capable, she's dominant, she's got a huge chip on her shoulder. Honey Rose. That was wonderful. I was starving. Must be the country air. We were right to come here. I know. Once we get the back door ramp finished, you'll be able to get out into the back garden. You'll feel better. 
And when I get back, you can take the car. You're too housebound. Where are you going? I'm just popping into town. You want to see Dr. Elliot. I won't let you. If it's the respite care thing that's got you worried, man, I'm not trying to get no, rid of you. No, it's not. You know. I want to see him as well, of course. I like him. But the respite care will be good for us both occasionally. Get away from him, Jennifer. It's not... What? Safe. Oh, come on, Marnie. I don't want to hurt you, but I've given up everything for you. For the first time, I think I've you met someone. I think, Jennifer. Don't do this to us. I love you. You're my sister. It's just that sometimes... Let me go. You have your work. I have nothing. Don't. I won't do it if you don't want me to. But don't hate me. Don't hate him. Hate doesn't begin to express how I feel, Jennifer. I have rights, too. Not I could have been... those rights. You don't behave properly with men. Our parents would be so ashamed. No, they wouldn't. I remember the last thing our mother said was... Money, please Jenny, don't, don't say anything that hurts me or makes me cry. I didn't mean to. No, you didn't. You just can't help yourself sometimes. You won't hurt me or make me cry by going to see that doctor, will you, Jenny? No. That's what you want. That's good. We're the roses, aren't we? And we stick together. Tractors nowadays had quadraponic sound systems and air conditioning. This doesn't even have a radio. Shut up, Luke. Yeah, are you telling me that I interrupted my study program the day before exams, mind you, to come all the way out here to see a tractor that doesn't even have a radio? Well, go home, then. I thought you'd be interested, Luke, but if all you want to do is criticise me, well, go away. It's a joke, Steve, a joke. This is a no-frills tractor. It's all I could afford, and besides, it's, well, it's got all the features I could want, so just butt out. Look, let me give you a hand. Well, take a look for yourself. It's no good. The PTO shaft doesn't fit the drive shaft properly. Oh, I'm so stupid not checking it before I took delivery. 
I can't afford a new PTO shaft, and even if I could, it'd take weeks. I'm so dumb, dumb, dumb. You know, my dad never have got himself into this mess. You've got welding gear here, haven't you? Yeah, of course I have. And when do you want to use all this? Tomorrow. The day after do. If I had all this hooked up by tomorrow, would I be a hero or what? <laughs> and I'd be your slave for life. My slave for life? For a day. OK, if you fix this tractor by tomorrow, you will have a slave for the day. Shake on it. You'll have a slave for the day. Deal. I hadn't realised you'd been in Wandon Valley before. Just that once, about 15 years ago. Our uncle owned the farm. We were going to visit him. But you never got there. The car ran off the road at Razorback Ridge. My parents were both killed and Marnie was injured. Crippled is the word, Doctor. Seems like you've been doing some checking up on us. I wish these questions weren't necessary, Jennifer, but I'll explain later. Um, do you remember a doctor helping you after the accident? Yes. An older man. Dr. Clark. Miss Rose, were you aware, or more importantly, was Marnie aware of any negligence on Dr. Clark's part? An error of judgment, say, that could have contributed to her paraplegia? I'm not sure I understand. Is it possible that Marnie could be harboring some resentment against Dr. Clark? Or against doctors in general? What is all this about? What are you trying to do? We want to help Marnie. I know she doesn't hold doctors in very high esteem. I heard her at the hospital. You have no idea what Marnie has been through. It was ghastly. I sat with her and watched her cry for hours with the pain. Of course she's bitter about doctors. Dreadfully bitter. Everyone she saw caused her more pain. Terrible pain. The last one. <laughs> she trusted him. She really trusted him. And he made her so many promises. Then he turned her away, refused even to see her, just because... <sighs> Poor Marnie. She gets so angry, and there's nothing I can say to help her. Jennifer? Oh, there you are, love. There's, there's not much more I can do here today. Mr. Hatfield, have you seen my sister? Yeah, she went to town a little while ago. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I thought she would have done that. No, she didn't. Well, listen, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything you can't sort of do? There is nothing I can't do for myself, Mr. Hatfield. Well, then I'll get off and I'll come back tomorrow. Maybe a couple of days after that should do it, eh? Did Jennifer say when she'd be back? It shouldn't be long. She said to go to the clinic. The clinic? Yeah, Dr. Elliot rang and said he wanted to see her. What? What did he want? Well, he didn't ask, did I? No, none of my business, is it? No, no, of course not. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow, then. Where did you find it? Oh, I told you, just caught up in some barbed wire. Where was the barbed wire? Oh, just on the side of the road. OK. Which road? Oh, just down from Steve Brennan's. Matt's going to look after you. Lucy? He's a lamb doctor. Lucy, that's Ted Campbell's place. Oh, is it? Oh, the poor thing. All right, I'll take a look at it. All right, just be gentle because it's it's an orphan. <clears throat> How do you know that it? Oh, that she's an orphan. Well, there's a deep laceration. Mm. She's dehydrated a bit. Better give Ted a ring. See what he wants me to do. Hey, look, don't give Ted a ring. Just treat her here. Go on, treat her here. Lucy, this could need suturing. <laughs> going to need antibiotics, tetanus toxoid, boarding for a few days. Ted may not want to pay for all that. Listen, I'll pay for it if he doesn't. You can't keep every baby animal that comes into the surgery. No, of course I won't keep every baby that comes through the surgery. I just want to treat Annie here until she's better. Now, what's in the formula, please? Matthew, you know if Ted Campbell sees like this, he's going to knock her on the head. Now, could you just hold it here, please? Annie's staying here until she's better. Lucy. Lucy? It's from the Department of Family and Community Services, the adoption unit. Not taking any applications for adoption. Our books are closed and they will be for the next 12 to 18 months. Well, we'll just have to go on the waiting list then. No, no, we can't. You have to be over 21 years old, yeah, that's us, but... 
you also have to be married at least three years. The attempt on Dr. Elliot's life was followed by another threat, Miss Rose. A message left on his answering machine. Yes, sir. I don't see what that has to do with me, Sergeant. I have reason to believe that you can help us with our inquiries. I don't see how. I hear that Bob Hatfield is doing your renovations. Is he finished yet? No, he'll be back tomorrow. All this helps to make you pretty independent, doesn't it? Along with the modifications to your car and your work, of course. Are there any guns in the house? Oh. No, no guns. Why? Why do you want? The attempt on Dr. Elliot's life was by gunshot. Uh, fired from a .22 rifle. I retrieved the bullet. There is no gun here. That cabinet's locked. The key's lost. I have no idea where it is. Huh. Well, uh, could I try to open it? You could say no, and I'd uh, then have to go and get a search warrant. Best all round if I checked it out now, though, wouldn't it? You don't mind, do you? Thank you. Well, somebody must have found the key. Evidently. But as you can see, there is no gun there. Yes. Sorry to have bothered you. Nothing. Ended up checking the whole house. Nothing suspicious at all. Except her behaviour. She was nervous, agitated. Do you think I should talk to her? Or Chris, maybe. As counsellors, we might be able to draw her out. It wouldn't be wise, Doc, and probably not necessary. Now, from the way she reacted, I think things are going to start moving quickly. Uh, Sergeant Gilroy. Yes, Miss Watson. Oh, thanks, Ez. I need a clean shirt uh, for tomorrow. Sergeant, could I talk to you for a moment in private? What's the matter, Ez? Here, let me take the basket. Come on, sit down. I didn't want to say anything to Dr. Elliot's things. Miss Watson, you are right. Well, what's wrong? What things? I didn't want to cause you any more trouble, Doctor. Miss Watson? Your clean washing was on the line and... It's been slashed to ribbons. They all have. Rose House, Jennifer speaking. Terence, hello. I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be? Marnie. Marnie's not here at the moment. Are you all right? Yes, of course. Where are you calling from? It's very sweet of you to be so concerned. I will. Bye. Jennifer! Oh. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Who was that? Marnie, where have you been? I have been looking everywhere. Who was that on the phone? Oh, nobody. It was that doctor, wasn't it? Elliot! What if it was? You mustn't! You mustn't! Where's the gun, Jennifer? Where have you hidden it? Why, Marnie? You won't be wanting it. Tell me where it is. Why? I have got to have the gun. You know why. There we go, Ms. Brennan. Mm. And Ms. Brennan. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, you're not going to have one yourself? No, I'd better get back to the Gilroys and relieve Luke of his babysitting duties. <laughs> but you're going to be on call tonight? Uh, yeah, and tomorrow I'll relieve Terence of his house calls and hospital rounds. This whole business is becoming more and more bizarre. How's he coping? Well, I think it's getting to him more than he's letting on. I've got to think about Jesse, otherwise I'd be at Camelot keeping an eye on him. Well, Chris, you can't be everywhere at once. No, and I certainly shouldn't be here. See you in the morning. Bye. See you, Steve. Bye. 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 People Bye. expect too much of him. That's all I was saying, Anne. Hmm. Yes, they do, don't they? I'm telling you, mate, she's not going to like it. She'll love it. She'll love it, won't you love it? Will I? A real grand bookie. No cookie. Might have been chap heard what it is yet. Next Tuesday, Rotex luncheon. Da da! How was that grab you? I knew you'd be impressed. All the top businessmen in the town will be there. No, I'm sorry. A couple of songs, a couple of jacks. She all. said no, mate. I asked for you personally. No more show business, Cookie. I've already decided. But Steve, I promised. I get the catering contract if you do the entertaining. 
Frank's show was one thing, but I've decided no more, okay? Finish. Just once. Uh-uh. Just this once. Good on you, love. Look, I'm sorry about the catering contract, but I did warn you. Now you coming, Anne? Oh, yes, yes sir, ma'am. Right away. I know what's going to be on the luncheon menu. What? You, what? mate. You. They're going to eat you. Don't you ever sleep? It's nearly time for a next feed. Already? Well, every six hours, you said. <sighs> You know, there are other options, Lucy. Yeah, not according to this. Well, older children, children with disabilities. But we have to take the adoption unit's advice and contact the private agencies. We're not going to let this get on top of us, are we? No, we're not. See? And you agreed. <laughs> Listen, you loudmouth. All it takes from me is one call to Ted Campbell. Oh, you wouldn't dare. Do you know what that lamb's future prospects are? Top filling as mutton stew. One of the best providers of woolen scarves and beanies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's it. That's it. Matthew? I'm sorry, Lucy. It's got to be done. Hey, listen, if being married to a vet means I've got to be hard and careless like you, then I want a divorce. Uh... Matthew? If you've hurt one hair on her fleece, you can forget about coming back in here. Your patient, Mrs. Bittenry. Oh, Matthew. <laughs> Just testing the strength of my weld. Did I wake you? Of course not. A bit early for a city boy to be up, though. Yeah, well, I've got exams at the tape tonight, so I've got to hit the books early. Here, give us a hand. Luke, it fits. Yeah? Well, what did you do? Well, I just got some old pipe, same gauge as the PTO, and stuck it on so I'd fit the drive shaft. Pretty basic, really. Well, that's fantastic. Do you reckon you can do it to the rest of my machinery? Sure, no worries. Just so long as you stick to your side of the bargain. Thanks, Luke. Got... What bag? Well, you said you'd be my slave for the day. You made a deal on it, remember? Yesterday. I did? Yeah. You will have a slave for the day. Those were your exact words. Oh, yes, I said that. So but... I'll see you at my house about 10 o'clock, slave. <laughs> haven't touched your breakfast. Mr. Hatfield will be here soon. I know what's been going on, Jennifer. I know what's been going on, Jennifer. And I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to take care of things once and for all. You've left me no choice. No, Marnie, please, don't. I promise I'll be good. No, it has to be done. Now, you stay here. When I get back, it'll all be taken care of. I'll ring him. I'll tell him you... I've hidden it. I can't let you stop me this time. Oh, dear, look at you. Come here and sit by me. Poor Jenny. You didn't get much sleep either, did you? I think you had a nightmare. Come on. Sit down here. Was it a nightmare? Seemed awfully real. Just don't think about it. You leave it all to Marnie, it'll all come right. You're going to ruin everything. No, I'm going to fix everything. Cheer up. What would Mummy say if she were here? Hmm? What would our Mummy say? Don't make me cry, Jenny. Don't do things that make Mummy cry. Oh, that's right. So while I'm gone, you be a good girl. And don't you do anything silly to make our Mummy cry. Marnie, don't do it, please. I have to, Jim. I'm sorry. You can arrange your own slave, mate. In the meantime, if you want to chew the sergeant's slippers, go fetch him yourself. Got better plans for my slave? Hey, Steve, do the dishes. Hey, Steve, run a bath for me. Steve, scrub my back. Come in. 
No, right on time. Your slave is here, Luke. Punctual. I like that in a slave. Good. Cookie. Tada! Cookie, meet your master. Luke, meet your slave. Well, what are you talking about? We had a deal. You're my slave. Uh-huh. And I said, you'll have a slave for the day. Yeah, those were your exact words. A slave for the day, Luke. Not necessarily me. Yeah, well, I, I met you. I, I mean, I thought you met you. Yeah, well, you thought wrong, didn't you? But Cookie... Don't look at me. It wasn't my idea. It was the only way I could get her to agree to sing at the Rotex lunch. But all I did was sublet my no, bet. lay off. It's true. No, love, love, lay off the bet, not sublet it. Oh, yeah, well, whatever. Well, you don't have to cancel your Rotex lunch. Luke gets a slave and I get to plough my west paddock. So everyone's happy. <laughs> well, have a good day, fellas. <laughs> Sorry about that, old mate. I know you were looking forward to having Steve at your beck and call. Yeah. So you won't want me hanging around under your feet all day. So I'll just Mickey whoop. Uh, not so fast, slave. Hey, eh? A deal's a deal. Oh, come on, Lee. Now, I can't study on an empty stomach. I think an open sandwich is a go with ham, cheese, tomato, salami... Hey, look, I've got better things to do, mate. Oh, yeah? Like cancelling the lunch at the Rotex Club? You have got a sadistic streak, haven't you, mate? One open sandwich on the double, please, slave. Ooh, sir. Dr Elliot? Morning. Frank. Morning, Miss Rose. Sergeant Gilroy. I'll come back later. Now, let's clear this up now. Come on in. Yes, very well. I thought I could avoid the police. I should have realised. You don't mind? What are you doing? I'll hang on to this until we can do some tests. What tests? What's happened now? Why are you carrying this, Miss Rose? To keep it out of harm's way. Jennifer... What's the matter with Jennifer? I wish I knew. You're the doctor. You're the one who's supposed to know about these things. Come on, Miss Rose. Why don't you try telling us the truth? I am trying to. It is very difficult. What did you hope to gain by harming Dr. Elliot? I knew you suspected me. You think I've been doing all this? Well, haven't you? No. No, Sergeant. You've got the wrong sister. What? Jennifer? Yes, Doctor. Poor Jennifer. I don't believe you. Can you prove all this? I haven't found the gun, if that's what you mean. If you must have evidence, I drew up a list of our movements over the past few days. It's in my handbag. There's a sample of Jennifer's handwriting in there as well. You thought I was going to attack you with a scalpel? Why? Because I don't like doctors? I suppose there's some sort of macabre logic there, but why would I bother? Why would Jennifer? Because she's... She's mad. That is a terrible thing. <laughs> so would you please pass me my handkerchief? That is a terrible thing to say about one's own sister. But she is mad. And it's getting worse, and I can't cope with it anymore. Where is Jennifer now? She's out at the farm. Don't worry. She can't go anywhere. I've got the car. Because she loves you. Or she thinks she does. She saw you in town over a week ago. 
Somebody pointed you out to us when I was making inquiries about GPs. And she became convinced that you'd given her a sign, some secret message. I didn't know what to do to prevent it from all happening again. This has happened before. Before we came here, Jennifer became obsessed with my GP in Sydney. She phoned him, followed him, sent him love letters, sent him threats by his poor wife. Didn't he refer to a psychiatrist? He wanted to. But I didn't want that. I, I thought I could manage the situation myself. We moved. I changed doctors. You can't handle something like this just by changing a dress. In fact, it made things ten times worse. Jennifer took it as a rejection of her whole personality. She became almost uncontrollable. And then, out of the blue, came this news about my uncle's will. The farm. Yes, I know. Another change of address. But I thought, out here, away from people. Sorry to interrupt. Miss Rose, I've been trying to phone your home number. The line's dead. I know. I unplugged it. Don't worry, Sergeant. Jennifer will be all right. I calmed her down before I left. Besides, she won't get very far on foot. How do you control her? Did your doctor prescribe something to calm her down? I talked to her. It's... It's a sort of ritual. Doc, it's for you, Esme Watson. She says it's urgent. Excuse me. Yes, Miss Watson. I'm sorry to bother you, Doctor, but I really don't have very much choice. There's a young lady here who wants to speak to you. She's very insistent. Tell him who the... Shut up! Don't! No, Doctor, no. I'm all right. Yes, it is, Miss Rose. In Mr. Hadfield's car. Yes, he's here as well. She has a gun. Tell him to come out here immediately, because Jennifer is getting impatient. She wants you to come home, Doctor. But I'd quite understand if you'd rather. Oh, here we go. That's much better. We won't be needing this any longer. I'll put some antibiotic ointment on that and take you back to the Campbells. What? No, I rang Ted today. Told him we had her here. Why? Because she belongs to him. If we keep her here without Ted knowing that amounts to theft, then it's not very good for my reputation to be branded as a sheep rustler. Ivan's out of wood. And there's no wood in the firebox. Lucy. How can we cook without it? I'll go and spit some wood. It's not his fault. He can't help being a vet. In fact, he's really quite sweet. I'll get your bottle ready in a minute. Hello. Oh, hi, Mr. Campbell. Now, he's uh, stepped out for the minute. Well, it's... Uh... It's touch and go at the moment, really. Touch and go. Well, Matthew's virtually given up hope. I will, Mr. Campbell. I'll pass that on. Tomorrow or the next day. around the back of the house, check for open doors, windows, vantage points. Please, Sergeant, just let me go in and talk to her. I can calm her down. I know what to do. Your sister already has two hostages in there. We don't want any more. We don't even know what she wants. <coughs> Jennifer, this is Frank Gilroy. Come out and talk to me. Jennifer, let Miss Watson and Mr. Hatfield come out. They can tell us what you want. Is Dr. Elliot there? Yes, he's here. He'll talk to you if you put down the rifle and come out. No, you send Terence in, then I'll let the others go. Marnie, come back. Jennifer, it's Marnie. I know you're upset. Come out and sit down with me. We can talk about it. No, Marnie, you're to keep out of this. Please, Jenny, it'll be all right. Do you want me to come in? No, go away, Marnie. I'm doing this to protect you. Go away. Don't you understand? It's Terence. He has to come to me. Frank, I've got to go in. No. 
I've already told Miss Rose, it goes double for you. Nobody else goes in there. I'm a culinary artiste. This is torture. OK, OK, you're excused from making the sandwich. I'm not that hungry anyway. Ah, oh, beauty, mate. You won't regret it, and the next time at the club, orange drink on the house. Da free, slave, back up. You're excused from making the sandwich, that's all. You've still got to work out the rest of your contract. Mate, I'm a dying man, and I've got a club to run. I've got two things to say. Steve Brennan, Rotex Lunch. All right, all right. Command me. You're a hard man, son. Frank's been teaching you police brutality, haven't he? No, but you can teach me ancient history. What do I know about ancient history? No, relax. All you've got to do is read the questions. Go on, Cookie. It'll be a real help. I've got an exam tonight. All right. See if I can focus. Yeah. Question one. Question one is, what are the main causes of the poly Parisian, the peppy pollution, the poply poofly? I'll never ask you questions like that. Question two. Jennifer, please come out and talk to us. The ambulance is due any tick. Make sure it stays out of sight. We don't want to panic it. Frank. What's happening in there? Oh, you're getting real shaky, Frank. I don't mind telling you, I was scared. But she keeps going on about the dock. How's Esme? Oh, she's frightened too. You've got five minutes. Five minutes, that's all. I'm supposed to tell you. She wants to dock in there by yourself, Doc. She keeps going on about destiny. I'm telling you, Frank, she's off a rocker. No. No. Doc. Sorry, Frank, it's my decision, not yours. Be careful, OK? won't do anything, Jennifer, not while I'm in here with you. Please, sit down and try to relax. I can't relax. Not until I've done it. Done what? Killed you, of course. Why do you have to kill me? It's our destiny. Jennifer, please, tell me, what's my crime? Oh, really, Terence? Do I have to spell it out to you? I'm afraid you do. Betrayal. You tried to seduce me away from my poor Marnie. I really loved you, you know? Even now, when I look at you. I swear to you, I had no... No more lies. I've seen it now. The mark of evil on you. You have to die. But why now? You could have killed me at any time, at the clinic, the farm. The signs weren't right. I'm waiting for the sign. What sort of sign? Jennifer? I'll recognize it when I see it. I always do. You see, I've always known I was special. That's not being silly or conceited. No, of course not. But when the accident happened, that's when the sign started to have meaning for me. Your parents' accident? I caused it. How? I was angry with Mummy and Daddy. And I willed them to die. No, you didn't. I have been granted the power of life. 
and death. That's a terrible responsibility, Terence. And my sister is the legacy of it. I will protect Marnie with my life. But I'm not a threat to Marnie. You tried to make me abandon her, like that other one did. If, if I promise... That's I've what the other one said. That's what he did. You're just I'm like him. Are you all right in there? Break up. Hang on, all right. Stop doing that again. Let's Thomas, Elliot, speak to us. They're listening. Get in there where they can't see us. Close the door. And the curtains, the blind. Pull the curtains. Hurry up. They only want to make... You're too dangerous. Too dangerous. Where's that rotten sheep? Look adorable. Look. Lovely. It's a new jumper, isn't it? Smell it. Lovely. Smells of wool. Oh, yeah, this was made of 100% wool. Oh, not processed refined wool. It smells of daggy, smelly, still on the sheep wool. Well, then you've got to wash it. You always wash your clothes. That before animal you. has been sleeping on it. Why are you being silly about such a little thing? That little thing is going to turn into a big nuisance. Very. Oh. Very soon. Poor little thing. Right, that is it. I haven't been feeding you enough. I'm going to fix you a bottle right now. Now. What else? Maybe she's too young for souls. You told me that. Oh, these veggies aren't for her. They're for us. Oh, that's nice. Yes, to go with our roast leg of lamb. Matthew! Now, where's the mint jelly, Lucy? Now to Greece, Master Luke. The four key figures in the Athenian drama were... Um, Aeschylus, uh, Aristophanes, uh, so fickle and Europite. So fickles and Sophile. Yeah. Euripides. Sophocles. That's exactly what I said. Which is your writing hand? You know, I'll give that a massage. You don't want that clamming up during the exam, mate. Uh, Sophocles and Euri Euripides. Euripides. Now, would Sir uh, like me to lay out Sir's shoot and tie? Get off. I'm wearing what I got on. The exam's at the TAFE, not a government house. Psychology, mate. You look smart. You feel smart. Yeah, well, I've got to go. Before you go, here, take this uh, pencil case, will you? It's got your blue biro, your black biro, your red biro, your rubber, your white out, and a calculator. A calculator for ancient history? Got to check the dates, mate. Oh, of course. And remember, uh, dinner for me and the sergeant, 8 o'clock sharp. No worries. Go get them, mate. You'll kill them. No, oh, I hope so. <laughs> Oh, what have we here? There. A oh, couple of steaks. That'll be lovely. Steak Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Cleopatra, born Egypt, 68 BC. Died Egypt, 30 BC. Co-ruled the country with her brother, Ptolemy. Ha! Like it. I like the dark. Nobody can reach me. Money always lights a candle if there's a blackout. Don't be silly, Jennifer. You can't sit around in the dark. Money's very sensible. Do you always do what Money says? Not always, of course not. I look after Money, that's my job. But but sometimes, if you're if you're not sure what to do. Sometimes, yes. You see, I don't think you're a cruel person, Jennifer. I don't think you want to use the gun. If Marnie told you... Of course you I don't want to do it. I'm not enjoying this. I have to do it, that's all. No, you don't. Yes, yes. It's something that has to happen. I've tried to stop myself. I even sent you messages, but you didn't listen. Now it has to happen. But Marnie can stop it happening. No, she can't. Not anymore. I'm more powerful than Marnie now. But you try. Wouldn't she? Because it's sensible. She should have stopped me. It's too late now. What, what, what would she do? It's too late. What would Marnie say? What would Mummy say? 
No, I said, what would... Yes. What would Mummy say? Come and sit by me, Jenny. Come and sit by me, Jenny. Then what would Mummy say? Mummy would say, Poor Jenny. Poor Jenny. Poor little Jenny. Very confused, aren't you, Jenny? I don't know what to do. Give me the gun, Jenny. Mummy wouldn't like you using a gun, would she? She'd be sad. Don't make me cry, Jenny. Don't do things that make me cry. I went to the door, and Mr. Hatfield and Miss Rose were standing there, so I said, come in, and, and then I saw the car, and I nearly died. You're a real brave, especially when you're around Doctor, yes, sir. Not as brave as you, Mr. Hatfield. Do you know he wanted Miss Rose to let me go first? Those old files really open your eyes. Yeah, they only made me realise just how many people had cause to wish me dead. Oh, Terence, that's a little melodramatic. No, it's not. You think about it. I know a number of guilty secrets that can destroy whole families in this town. And then there's all those borderline decisions we have to make that affect people's lives forever. Not uh, always for the best. I like Dr. Clark after the accident. Was that negligence, do you think? Well, it certainly ruined Marnie's life. And eventually Jennifer's too, I suppose. It nearly cost three more today. Chris, <clears throat> do you mind driving me home? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, oh. sure. Terence, I'm sorry. That was very thoughtless of me. Oh, no, no. It's, it's just a delayed reaction, I think. Every time I close my eyes, I keep seeing a finger on the trigger. Come on. Well, I don't remember consciously watching the trigger at all. Ah, oh, Sarge. Oh, I thought you must be home. How'd it go? Oh, OK. Except for one question I'd like to show you. How was uh, your day, anyway? Oh, you know, somewhat of a to-do yeah, out of Camelot. Yeah, good one. Here we are. List the pharaohs of Egypt in the 18th dynasty. Now, I was OK until I got to Hatshep put. Hatshet put, Tomahosis the third, Amaphosis the second. Bummer, I got him in the wrong order. And the carton, or was it Abbot the fourth? Cookie, what have you done? Uh, I've turned myself into encyclopedia, that's what I've done. Hey, Frank, do you think you can get me onto that television quiz show? Look, all I wanted was dinner for two. Look at this mess. What piece? Oh, hi, Lee, good job. Oh, dear, what's happened? How was your day? Cookie. Luke, would you please explain what's happened to my kitchen? Uh, well, well, I'm a victim of the same thing. going to help me out. Have to have to 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 Cookie, thank you. Thank you very much for helping Luke. But don't you ever, ever touch my kitchen again. Cookie, I think you better go now. Hey, no, don't have to worry. Once he sees my Caesar salad. Caesar. Caesar, one of the oldest family in ancient. Ancient. It's fading. It's fading. Good night, Cookie! Give us a clue. Give us a clue. Beat it. I'll take the money. Get out. Out, out. She wants to come inside. She's all right. Sheep are meant to be outside. That's why they've got those woolly coats. But she's sick. No, she is fine. She'll be going back to the Campbells tomorrow. No. Lucy? No. Oh, hell. 
You know, it's not fair. They have all these pictures of these children. The minute you try to do something personally, wham, red tape. Oh, hello, hello, hello. I'll keep you nice and warm. Yes, I will. You hungry? Yes? I'll get you a bottle. And you're right, we do have lots of other avenues to explore, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I'll get you a bottle. Lucy's going to the kitchen right now. Oh, yes, listen. I'm starting to become a man's costume. You're starting to Bev, uh, it's, uh, it's Matt Tyler. Okay. Yeah, could you put me through to Ted Campbell, please? No, you have to wait until the Ted, Matt Tyler. I'm oh, sorry, did I wake you? Okay. Uh, well, listen, I was wondering if I could take that sheep off your hands. Market price? Oh, sure, Ted, no worries. Okay, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. He didn't have to do that. Well, as long as it doesn't sleep in here with us. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm the mothering type. And I think I'm going to adopt a lot of orphans. That's OK. But you are the most important thing in my life. That's what I like to hear. 